Tom Porker here, Focus Outdoors. This next few days we're going to be hunting Michigan and Wisconsin up in the Great Lakes area. I look at it as a great opportunity to hunt with some great people from RGS. We're going to start out with Davey Johnson, otherwise known as Swede, and then we're going to go hunt with Mark Fouts in Wisconsin on our way home to Minnesota. So stay tuned. I think we're going to have a ball. We're going to learn a lot. Come along and join us. She's looking right to the left. Mark, She's looking your way, Mark. Mark, we got a hole. That's and about 35 yards out they crossed the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a gun! <laughs> well, it's a double there. There are two birds. Yeah. One got up, he shot at it. I'm ready to take it. I did too, yeah. And the second we got up. Well, whatever you want to do, sweetie. Let's I... go back, let's go back up to the and trail. I moved one All down right. there. From RG. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up. <laughs> here's where you should be thanking. There you go. Boy. You know, folks, here's why we have dogs. That bird landed right out in this beaver pond behind us. We would have never found that without a good, hard going setter like uh, Zeus the Gordon setter. He went out in the water. How far was he out there marking that? 10 feet, but it was knee deep water. It was, yeah, we would have never found it. A lot of grass, a lot of grass. And Dave, just before the bird went, he goes, You guys be ready, there's usually a bird around here. <laughs> you have them in the cages, don't you, Dave? We couldn't have got to the bird unless we wanted to be soaking wet, drenched. We have over a mile to go back. So Zeus picked that bird up, ran it back to shore. He's young, he's only a year and a half, so that's like some exceptional, exceptional work. And what we have, maybe if you'll hold my shotgun, what we have here looks like a little older bird. That's a nice bird. That's a nice bird, beautiful bird. And we're gonna try to figure out what we have for sex here. And what we have here, we have two little white dots, which means it's a male. So if this was a female, you'd have one dot right on the end, just like that. And it's, these feathers are a little beat up and wet. But 
You can see the second dots just below there. Now, a lot of people would go by that fan and they'd say, oh, it has a broken fan, so it's a female. And they think that if it's a solid fan, it would be a male. That does not dictate the actual sex of the bird. So, pull a rump feather, take a good hard look at it. Two dots male, one dot female, and it's just kind of fun to see whether, what sexes, male, females, what you're shooting and taking. Davey, what do you think that bird well, this year's early if hat? You look at, if you look at the primary feathers on the wing, see how they're worn? Yep. That's, that's more than a juvenile bird. So That's the second year bird possibly second or year older. Bird. Yeah. You know, their lifespan is average three years, three and a half years. So, But looking at the number 10 and number 9 feather, I'm going to say that's a non-juvenile bird, last year's hatch or, or earlier. And when, when, I, when you first see a bird like this, you see these feathers coming down over the fan. So sometimes these fans don't look. But if you pull those feathers back, that's a big fan. That's a beautiful bird. Beautiful Michigan rough grouse. Right where he's supposed to be. Right where he's supposed to be on a horrible, brutal weather day. And I want to really give credit to this little guy right here. Because he, he's been in the woods quite a bit, but that is probably the best retrieve on down game I've seen him have so far. So. He thought it was his. Yeah, well, that's all right. That's all right. He's the only dog in the ground. Yeah, so it, it is was good. his. <laughs> but. Zeus, Gordon Setters, for you folks who don't know, um, you have your English Setters, your Red Setters, your, your Irish Setters. These dogs are from Scotland, originally, Scottish dogs. Davey has two, I have one, and Mark has two, and this is our up-and-coming star right here in our bird camp. So thank you, Zeus, sir. That was really awesome. Perfect, perfect little spot for grouse. And a bonus is I even have to call them out of it. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we have customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds. Make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal. The only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at airwavepedestal.com. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime.
the experiment's working or not, but it was when, when I found this place before they logged it, because yeah. I was checking on my property, and it was just basically a snake trail uh, ah. through this property, heavy, dense, black spruce, white spruce, balsam. Uh, so I talked to the forester that was in here, and he told me what they were trying to do. Okay. Right? So, so we'll see. Uh, well, but it's, it's got some nice cover. There's, there's nice cover. There, there seems to be a regeneration in the sunny areas. Yep. I mean, yeah. So, like you say, you don't have that much topsoil. Right. Yeah. And then the water's right up there, too. So, so that's, they know that's all they're going to grow here. Yeah. Where if we, we just move 200 yards, you're going to see it's upland and it's much better uh, aspen regeneration on, on that part, okay. part of the property. That area, um, July 2nd, 1999, there was a tremendous windstorm that came through the Apostle Islands and hit the South Shore Lake Superior. It basically flattened sections of timber. And that's okay. what happened, uh, this property that we're gonna walk into. It, it basically flattened any tree that had any market value. And the young stuff stayed. Right. So they went in and did a salvage cut. And I talked to the logger that did the cut. He said it was the most dangerous job they'd ever done because wow. everything was loaded. Uh, so they went in with heavy equipment and they made sure that nobody got hurt. But then they put the property up for sale. And that's wow. how I bought it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bar Moving again, Tom. Straight out, there's a little road right in front of you. Hey! Hey, why you shoot a dead bird? Huh? <laughs> bad word, bad word. here if this dollar bill was longer I mean, the bill was longer than the dollar it would indicate it's a female woodcock because the bill is shorter than a dollar bill uh, this is a male they're unique creatures their brain is upside down in their skulls and then it's cradled because they spend so much time probing for earthworms and also their physiology if you'll notice this opening this is the woodcock's ear, and it's located below its eyes. It enables them to see predators coming from 180 degrees. It also gives them the ability to hear danger approaching. So they're very efficient little feeders. This happens to be a local bird. We haven't had a lot of northwest winds that would move the flight birds across Lake Superior. 
So we can rest assured that this is a, a local bird that was bred and uh, raised here. Go ahead. The other thing that's unique about these birds, their primary diet is, earth, is earthworms. And the tip of their bill is prehensile, which means they can actually have the back half of their, their bill closed and the front half would open like that. It's hinged. And it allows them to capture earthworms in the, the topsoil without grabbing a lot of dirt along with their diet. In Michigan, hunting with uh, Swede Johnson from the Rough Grouse Society, and uh, I've been shooting one brand of shells for years and years. Uh, and before that, I used to shoot, uh, shoot Fiocchi. Now, I've come full circle back to Fiocchi. I am shooting seven eighth ounce loads seven and a half shot because we still have some woodcock around and I don't want to rip up the woodcock too bad um, but yet even with this seven eighths ounce I probably took a grouse the other day at 20 made a clean harvest on the bird so they still have enough kick to get that job done so if you're looking for a quality shotgun shell try Fiocchi I think you'll be happy right now I know I am High Point Pet Foods presents Country Creations Dog Foods, offering quality nutrition for the life of your canine companion. To fuel the fire of puppyhood into keeping the energy level high of an active young dog. Optimizing the performance of the hard charging adult or having a quality diet for your senior canine companion. Country Creations has you covered with their quality formulas. Get in touch with High Point Pet Foods today. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we have customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds. Make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spend a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays fields, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the Rio Elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot Rio Elite. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. We are here in, uh, in Michigan doing a quick little hunt. We've got a, a rather large low pressure system moving in. Uh, forecast is for an inch rain today. We came out, it was raining heavily when we got out here. And what we were looking for, for these birds, they don't like to get wet. Their feathers aren't designed to shed water like a duck. So they're looking for understory like this, where they can tuck in and stay out of the rain. They'll stay on the leeward side of a, of a trunk like that where the rain doesn't hit them, especially with all this heavy evergreen cover. We've got some, uh, I'm not sure, uh, we call it rubbish. Not rubbish, rubbish, but rubbish. You've got a lot of ground cover here where the bird can be concealed from predators and still be protected out of the wind, out of the rain by these conifers. What we have here, we've got a white, this is a white cedar. We've got a black spruce right there balsam, 
and if you look around I believe there's some white spruce in this stand as well as some eastern hemlock. So good mix and we specifically targeted this area knowing that this is what we we're looking for today with this heavy rain. work and uh, a little good a little bit of shooting go a long way. Yeah. Good job you guys. Good job. Should we go find another one? Sure. Come on Kylie, sure. let's go find another. Bob Jackwart. I'm the CEO of Jackwart Fiber Products and Stormy Cromer. I was asked to tell the story of Stormy Cromer and how it came about to this wonderful town of Ironwood, Michigan. In 2001, I was a Stormy Cromer hat wearer and a contract sewing company. Uh, we built things out of fabric for all of my life and uh, we're always looking for niches of work that really China couldn't do. And um, so it turned out that in June of 2001, the local Ironwood dealer called in an order for Stormy Cromer caps, and they said they weren't making them anymore, that the, they were closing that line of their business. He found me in a restaurant that afternoon and kind of put a finger in my face and said, they quit making Cromer caps. You better do something about it. And I smiled and said, why don't you get me the number, and I'll give them a call and buy the company. And after I said it, it was really fun because I smiled and said to myself, oh, yeah, right, like you'd own that someday. So um, I got the number that afternoon. I gave the second owner of the Cromer Cap Company, Dick Grossman, gave him a call in Milwaukee and um, asked him if he'd be interested in talking to me about changing this business changing hands. And so he kind of smiled at me and said, hey, this whole thing's been smiles, so I keep using the word smile because this has been so much fun, um, but he said to me, it's interesting, but the entire demographic of the Cromer Cap right now is basically the Upper Peninsula, and uh, it won't get much bigger. And I said, fine, you know, I'll come and take a look at it. So we bought the company and got into it a little bit and started working on the products, learned how to make hats. We had never made a hat before. Um, after I bought the company, I got a, a photo album full of old black and white photos of Stormy Cromer. I didn't know much about him, and so I started learning about his quirkiness that, yes, he was a railroad engineer, and but he also loved to play baseball more than anything. So one of the fun stories about Stormy Cromer is that he had to ask his future father-in-law three times to marry his daughter because he didn't have a job, and so we found out that he was quite quirky, and he built these hats, and... Um, and it funded him eventually owning a minor league baseball team. But for us, the hat was in the Upper Peninsula for a long time, even though on a very small basis. About six months into it, I had someone come up to me and say, 
are Stormy Cormor caps really made in my hometown of Ironwood, Michigan? And I said, yes, I make them in my factory. And she said, I want to show you a photo. So out of her purse comes a photo of a grave marker. And it turned out that it was a grave marker for her husband's hat on Isle Royal. And her husband had been a Stormy Cormor hat wearer and all of his life. And when he passed away, his fishing buddies asked him asked her for his hat so they could bury it on Isle Royal. So there's a Cromer cap buried on Isle Royal in someone's memory. And then I, uh, took, I took a hat, went down and interviewed marketing companies in, in, the, in the same town that the, I bought the business from. So I went back to Milwaukee and uh, got some really good advice. We, we, we know that this patent that Stormy Cromer had is famous for it, which the ear flaps come down straight up and down. People don't realize this is exactly how it's done, is this way. This patent actually expired in 1942. So there are no patent rights here, but I then learned um, that one of the things you could we could do to make this um, a little more ours would be to trademark a name. And so I bought this hat from the Cromer Cap Company, and we knew that his nickname was Stormy, so we became Stormy Cromer and trademarked Stormy Cromer. And we started putting the signature of Stormy Cromer on every hat. Um, and then we started putting the story in every hat. And uh, so this became our changes that we made the signature and the, and the label. And we started selling more and more hats every year. Um, Six or eight months after we did all of this, um, I got a call from the Milwaukee Journal. The Milwaukee Journal interviewed me. I didn't think it was much, but it ended up that our story of how Stormy Cromer came to Ironwood ended up on the front page of the Sunday paper in Milwaukee, and it went to nine other cities throughout the Midwest the next day in the Associated Press, and it just launched us into a place that we just didn't realize. And so wrap things up, Cromer is starting to be a significant part of my community, which is really good for myself and my daughters, um, for our business to give, an, give input to this community is really wonderful for us, and we're very grateful, and we will continue to do this, do this forever if we can. Diesel train rolls down the line As I'm headed for the land of corn and rye There is a place I'm always satisfied Full of remedies to ease my worried mind Like pulling catfish on the banks of Cherry Cove Watching wood ducks go